Uh, good evening, gentlemen. Um, tonight, uh, we're gonna have a chat about 3D printing. Um, what's it for and how do we use it? Um, in the model railway world, obviously it can be used for things, uh, companies like Hornby and um, Backman will prototype. Uh, they'll do a CAD drawing, 3D print something to prototype it and have a look at what it looks like. But for people like us, I think it's a lot more useful to create little scenic bits and bobs or just um, make, make stuff uh, generally for the railway rather than rolling stock but you could probably 3d print wagons quite successfully uh, one of the things about this kind of 3d printing is that the level of detail probably isn't great enough for a, a coach or a locomotive or something and it, it doesn't have a completely smooth finish as well um, there are just talking about 3d models generally there are two ways you can create a 3d model one is what they call subtractive, which is what people have done since time immemorial, and that's carving. You start with a big block or, or on a, a lathe, you, you remove material. Whereas in the modern form of 3D printing, you, it's additive, so you add material starting from nothing. So, uh, and that's what we're gonna to demonstrate today. So this kind of 3D printing is built in layers from the bottom up, and the layers, the smallest layer my printer can do is 0.15 of a millimeter very very thin but there are some that can go even more detailed than that and also there's two kinds of uh, hobby printers there's this is a plastic printer but there's also resin printers which um, the machine ex extrudes resin or it, um, it just drips resin out and it's hardened by uv light um, rather like some glues you get these days similar sort of thing um, and that has to be in an enclosure because it's quite fumy as well so um, but uh, i've gone for this kind um, so how do we create a model? Um, I've got some CAD software set up here, which we're gonna demonstrate in a bit. And the plan is to make a model um, we need for Neuhaus, and we've got this car transporter here. And we're gonna make a ramp, um, which butts up against the track to enable the cars to be unloaded into the Neuhausen village. So that's the plan tonight. Um, and what we'll do, we'll start by sketching a 2D shape, and this is the way the CAD works, and then you extrude it. Um, into a 3D model. It's very, very powerful software. Um, the, the software we're using today is called Fusion 360. It's by a company called Autodesk. Um, it's very good and very powerful, and for hobby users, it's free, which is uh, very important. Um, the stipulation is you can't make any money from it at all. So as soon as you start making money, you have to pay for a license, um, but it's pretty good stuff. Um, it'll then be exported to a, an app called a slicer app, which, so you take your 3D model, of whatever it is, and then it has to be sliced in order for the computer to be able to print it. So the slices are our layers that we talked about of 0.15 or 0.2. Uh, tonight um, we'll probably do 0.2 or 0.3 millimeter slicing. Um, but it does have some limitations. Um, I'll show you this. This is um, the print bed. And um, this is for, Bob asked a question, he sent a question about different kinds of plastic. There are two kinds that I generally use. One's called PLA, which is what this is. Um, it's probably the easiest to work with, um, but it has limitations in it. It's quite brittle. And also it's not terribly temperature tolerant. So if you want to use it in something like a car for a phone holder, it's not good because it will go soft in the heat in the, um, and also it's not, sunlight tolerant either it's it's um it's made out of, it's a plant-based plastic and it's it's made out of plant material so it is sort of biodegradable in that if you leave it outside it will eventually break down um this particular sheet is for petg don't ask me what the letters stand for but that's a more um you can use that outside it's waterproof as well which pla isn't um, and um, it's a bit more flexible as well, but it's not quite as easy to print with. And this is the print sheet that you put it on. These things are flexible, and it goes on top of the print bed on the printer, and the print bed is heated as well. So, um, and different plastics need different temperatures. To The big key is getting the plastic to adhere to this bed. Um, and to that end, this is one of the limitations. You have to have a flat surface somewhere on your model in order to print on the bed. So you, printing a sphere is virtually impossible unless you print it in two halves. Um, I have here a model 
which I'll pass round. This is a dragon that was printed on this very printer and it's all curled up. It actually, but you can see on the bottom here, it's got a flat surface. So it was printed that way up and I'll pass that around for you all to have a look at. The only bit that was printed separately are the two whiskers. Everything else was printed as one go. All the joints are 3D printed and it's really quite clever. So if you want to pass that round. Um, as I say, the slicer software comes with the printer generally. This printer is a Prusa printer, which comes from the Czech Republic, uh, invented, uh, made by a guy called Joseph Prusa, very, very popular. He started off in quite a small workshop. Now he's got a huge factory in Prague. And I bought it as a kit and assembled it all myself. Um, cost is about 700 quid for this one. Um, so um, in the slicer software, I'll show you in a bit, you can um, select what kind of plastic you're using and what slicer size you want. And also you can put things, if you want an overhang, <coughs> you can't print into thin air. So if you want to print something that's got a bit of an overhang, you generally have to put a support in as well. And the slicer software will look after you on that as well. Um, and uh, as I say, finally, um, on the printer, you can select what kind of plastic in the slicer software and that sends it to the printer. The printer's got an SD card slot. So you basically save your creation from the slicer software, <coughs> export it onto an SD card, just plug it in and press go. And then you can walk away and leave it. That dragon took 22 hours to print. So um, that's the sort of time scales we're looking at here. Okay, so uh, what we're gonna do now is move on to the um, uh, software for um, designing. And as I said, what we're gonna do is design a ramp. I've already got the measurements here. And um, so we start off um, you, by drawing a sketch. And in the um, CAD software, you can only draw a sketch on two things. You can draw it on a plane, which is what the three planes, we've got the X, Y, Z planes showing there, or on a surface. So once you've drawn something, then you can do another sketch on that surface. So we're gonna start off and create a sketch up here and we'll choose the um, front plane. So it automatically spins round. And what I'm gonna do now is uh, I'm just gonna move this over a little bit and I'll get rid of this as well. I think I'll just move that up, there we go. So I'm gonna draw a line here. So, uh, and we're gonna go up and you can specify, uh, oh, we've got a very, we're zoomed quite in here because that's, uh, so we need, um, it's gonna be 18 millimeters tall, right? So I'll just, uh, and enter that. Okay, so I'm just gonna zoom out a little bit. Right, so we now draw another line along here and that's gonna be from there to there is seven, um, 17 millimeters. So I'll just type that there and enter. And then we're gonna go um, from here uh, another line from here, and this is gonna be our ramp. So I want the ramp to be 10 degrees. So I'm just gonna set 10 degrees in here. Let's go in the wrong, that's it, there we go, 10 degrees. So I'm gonna go carry on down here. Just gonna move across until we hit this line here. Just to be about it there. And then finally, we're gonna join it up here. So that's the shape of our ramp. And you'll notice it's now gone blue, which shows we've got an enclosed area. So that's, I'm gonna finish the sketch there. So that's our first sketch. And now what I'm gonna do is um, what they do a press, what they call a press pull. And uh, if I spin this round a little bit, you see we've got this arrow here where you can just drag it. And I'm gonna drag that out to 40 millimeters. There we go. So that's done. So there's our ramp already done. All right. So what I want to do now is um, do some walls on the ramp. So um, this is the sort of vehicles falling off the side. So I'm gonna do, um, in real world, it'll be 600 mil high by 300 mil width. So again, uh, I can select this here now, and um, I'm gonna create a sketch and it's done the whole thing upside down. So we go that way and I'll zoom in a little bit there. So again, just draw a line from here to there and um, it's seven mil tall and uh, that's, that's absolutely correct, that one. 
um, and 90 degrees. So 7 mil is the scale size and uh, for um, 600 millimeters in HO. So um, we're going to go, so that's that one. And then we're going to go from there uh, 70 millimeters along. So 70 there and we'll settle for that. And now also from here, I'm going to go up. I need to select this again, so up. Um, 90 degrees and that is also going to be seven millimeters and it's done the angle wrongly so I shall D for dimension it sorry select that again should be able to turn that around I'm going to undo that um, all right I'll try a different I'll try a different attack here so what I'm going to do is draw down here and go to here and then go down there. There we go. That's worked perfectly. So that's um, finished our sketch there. So now what I'm going to do is highlight that sketch there and we're going to um, pull it three and a half millimeters in indoors. Okay. So that's minus five. So I've got uh, minus 3.5. So that's our. Um, our wall. Um, I don't propose to um, completely do this because you'll probably find this quite boring, but that's how the CAD software works. Little things you can do at the ends here. So what I want to do, I don't want, quite want these harsh ends here. So I'm going to click on there, that little bit there. Oh, I think that's, I'll get a bit closer there. That's it. And I'm going to chamfer that and I'm going to put a one mil chamfer on it. Uh, so, or a fillet it's called. So, um, and you see, you can just drag this in here to see what it looks like. So you can actually get put a round over on the end there. One millimeter, there we go. So that's that. And likewise down this end, do exactly the same. Um, and uh, sorry, we just want to jump for that. There we go, and just do one in there. So you get your little round over at the end there. Um, the other thing I wanted to do is put some buffers on the end here. So basically to do the other side, we do exactly the same um, on the other side. And also I want to put two buffer stops on the end here so that it doesn't crash into the thing. Um, I'm not gonna do that now, but in good Blue Peter fashion, Here's one I made earlier, <laughs> right? So what I've done here, that you've got both your, your walls in, in place uh, and there's the buffer stops and they are from measurements that I took from the wagon, which is this wagon here. And um, remember I also said we couldn't print into thin air. These, if these buffer stops were um, 90 degrees down the bottom here, the, the 3D printer would struggle to print that. It can do it, but it'll be a bit messy. So I've put these um, little, um, 45 degree angles in the supports there, which I don't think look terribly wrong anyway. So that's what we've done. Is that so you can build it up slowly? Yeah, it builds it up slowly. It, yeah. it, it, can't, it can do what they call overhangs and it will do bridges, but just sticking stuff out in thin air won't work. Normally when you slice it, you put a support underneath, but they only stick out three and a half mil, so there's not really room for a support either. If it was longer, you could put a support in and yeah. bridge it. Yeah. Um, but, um, so if, are there any questions on the CAD software and how it all works? And as you can see, you can just spin it all around and do all sorts of funny stuff with it. I mean, is, uh, you, obviously you're, you've used it quite a lot. Is it fairly intuitive to use? Or? Reasonably. I learnt it all from videos online. There's a guy called Lars Christensen who does, but there's loads of people do these. There's all YouTube videos. I've never... Because that's, that's what I find, <coughs> you know, you spend hours fiddling with software yeah, and trying but, to work I mean, out. What keys to use and yeah, but you know, exactly, but but I mean, if you if you just want, you can just do things like um, I'll, I'll quickly show you a um, I'll just draw a sketch and we we'll use any old plane here, um, and uh, I'm going to bring up a toolbox and this is what they call a center rectangle, so you can just draw a rectangle, specify what size you want. I mean, this is just to make a box, but uh, I call it 180 by um, 100. There we go. So there's our box. It's already constrained, as they call it, <coughs> so it knows where it is. I'll just press pull and we will just pull it up 
uh, there we go, there's a box of 50 mil depth, right? But you want to cut out the, um, uh, the middle. So let's, on this surface, we'll just create another um, uh, bo uh, centered box. And you can just, uh, let's do that. Okay. Um, and I'll hit enter there. Um, yeah, so that'll do. But what you can now do is with this dimension thing, you can just say, I want that distance there to be, um, didn't work, hang on, do it again. So you can say, I want there to there to be, let's make, we want, the, oh, it's over constrained because I've already, this isn't a terribly good demonstration, but I'll just hang on. Um, I'll get rid of that middle one, but um, yeah, you can, do the di dimension it so you can specify that uh, between there and there. So you can actually say, I want that five mil thick. There we go, like that. Likewise from there to there. It's a, a, there's, there's, some, there's some constraint in here that's not letting me do it, but um, it's because I'm trying to do it quickly. But you can specify the, w the width of the walls. And then I'll finish that sketch. I won't bother doing it. But now I can, that middle one I can do, and I can do a pull, what they call a press pull again, and actually create, take out material like that. And if you want, if you want it just to be a, um, go all the way to the bottom, so I can actually change this, what they call to an object, and I can actually get it to go all the way through like that. So there we go. So now we've got a, Otherwise it'd be a solid block. Otherwise it'd be a solid block. But let's say, um, but I, there's a history timeline down here, so you can now go and um, uh, edit this feature, and I'm going to do an offset of minus three millimetres. Um, I did that the wrong way around, so it should be an offset of three millimetres. So I'll just try a three millimetre offset. So now that's created a box with a three millimetre um, base and, and that it's you know it's as simple as that and there's all sorts of regular shapes you can do circles and but it's really clever because it works out where intersections are and things like that but uh, anyway that's how we can spend more time talking about this uh, for the um, software it takes time to learn and I've watched the same videos over and over again just to get more and more proficient but it, in three 20 minute videos I've got this proficient really um, so it's not that difficult um, so going back to our car ramp, what we're going to do now is um, uh, I shall, uh, I just need to bring up a uh, show browser, I think that's the one. Yeah, so I'm now going to click on this and we're going to save it as a mesh. There we go, so it fires up this software and then your ramp appears on a mock-up of one of these. Uh, and so you select what kind you want. So I'm going to select, um, so let's say we want a 20 mil quality using Prusament PLA. And then all we do is slice now. And there we go, that's already done. And it says it's going to, uh, I need to go to advanced here. Oh, perhaps you can't see it down here. There we go. It says it's going to take, it uh, cost is £1.33 and it's going to take 3 hours and 36 minutes to print. Um, this thing here is quite good. I oh, don't know if I can get rid of that or not. Um, but you can actually see the slices. So if I go down here, so it start, they're starting at the bottom and you can actually see it building the slices up. Okay? So, and um, there's also in here, this isn't solid, it's all infill. So you can actually select the infill percentage. So if I go to 10% infill, slice now, um, it, it basically creates a lattice work with it. So at the top, you can put your flat layer on the top. And then down here, it says export G code. Um, I haven't got my card printer plugged in, uh, my card reader plugged in, but you would ex export that to your SD card and you're ready to go. So moving on to the printer now, we've got, um, this is a reel of PLA here, and I'll just show you how you load it. So I'm gonna select here. Um, auto load filament, right? And 
it says auto load, so I'm gonna put it in there. Press, oh, it's got to select which one it is, PLA. Oh, it says preheating to load. I thought that was uh, odd. So basically, the, the print head for PLA has to be at 215 Celsius, and the print bed will be at uh, about 60 or 70 Celsius. And each different kind of plastic has its own profile in terms of the temperature it needs and what the bed temperature has to be. What I'm gonna do in the meantime is, so just to show you as well, this flexible print bed, it's a different texture to that one. This is the one to use for PLA, that one's for PETG, and it's all to do with adhesion. The, the real issue with, um, with sometimes with 3D printing, it, it's getting the first layer right. Once you've got your first layer on, everything else sticks to it, but if the first layer doesn't stick to the bed, you finish up with an absolute spider's web of or a bird's nest of plastic. So I'm just gonna put that back on there. I'm gonna give it a clean with a bit of isopropyl alcohol, which is what we've got here. Yeah, yeah, I keep that away from Bob. <laughs> yes, there we go. And it says it's preheated to load, so it just you just feed this in here, press the knob to load the filament. There we go, and it starts loading it. Um, this is a color is Galaxy Silver. Um, just I normally use this as my go-to color. This is a, a sort of gray color. You can see all the it, oozing out the bottom now. And basically, as you change, this is, it treats this as a color change. So um, it'll feed through, and I'll say yes, that's the correct color. And you can just pull that off. There we go. Bit of plastic. Um, so now. Um, in blue piece of fashion as well, I've already preloaded in this. Um, I can print two versions. One is the draft version at 0.3 of a millimeter, uh, or the other one is the 0.2. I'm the, we're not gonna finish printing this tonight, um, and I don't intend to. This is just to show you how it works. And in my pockets, I've actually got some I printed earlier. Right, so, um, you get a badge. yeah blue piece of badge. So what should we go for, the point, uh, point 0.3 or point, um, I'll do the, I'll tell you what, I'll do the point 0.2 version. So uh, there's a menu here with all the, uh, you just go through the folders here. In fact, I'll do the point 0.3 version, that'll be a bit quicker. So just set it going. And what it'll do, the ramp is already heated to 60 degrees, the, the, this is already heated, and here it goes. That stuff that you use to clean the uh, yeah. fabrication, what, what, is it, has it got like special chemicals? No, it's just alcohol, it's neat alcohol. Um, uh, but it's a good, um, it gets rid of all the grease that's on the. So basically it goes around and it's got, senses nine different heights of the print bed uh, and does this first. And then the next thing it does is a little squidge here. So it, it, it does a little run through of plastic right at the edge and this is all completely automatic I've done nothing here apart from um, now what it does is do an outer rim and it's going to print the uh, and again it's just to get it printing so you don't get any little blobs and things it just starts it does an outer rim of the model that you're printing and it'll then start printing the bottom layer there we go, so it's printed the rim. Bear in mind what you are actually in, in, intending to print. Yeah. A, a ramp, a plastic ramp. Yeah. Is that cost effective? Could you go out and buy one? One pound, about a pound. Oh, right, I don't know. So this yeah. is the ramp we've just designed, if you want to pass that round. This is printed at point two. So the, there is, a um, again, a slight Achilles heel with this in that because it's printed in layers, you can't print a perfect slope, so it's got a slight... Um, yeah. <laughs> and this is the point 0.3 version. This is one I printed without the um, the little, remember I told you about the little fillets to support? This is the earlier prototype. And also I printed the buffers too far apart. So, um, but that's what is really useful for is prototyping. So I, this is a prototype and that's the finished version. So if you want to pass that one round, you can have me drag them back. I guess that material can't be used, can it? No, no. Um, but, and as I say, you need to keep an eye on the first layer because if it's going to go wrong, it's generally the first layer that goes wrong. So a reel of that plastic that you're using there, what sort of cost that? That's about 20 to 25 pounds. Oh, that's not too bad. It's a kilo. 
As I say, it, this software actually tells you what the um, cost is, and it says one pound twenty. But I, I, I think I've not got the correct price. I think I've overpriced the plastic in here, so I think it's probably less than a quid. Oh, right. So it's in, that, in those terms, then it's cost effective. Oh, absolutely, yeah, um, yeah. You can't buy anything for less. For ten quid. Yeah, for yeah, yeah. Mind yeah. you, you're building a seven hundred pound printer. Yeah, seven hundred quid for your printer. Well, yeah. But it's the same about printing anything, really. You know, it's, you know Dave, is there, if there's a facility, there probably is somewhere, yeah. probably because of an arm and a leg, yeah. where if you've got a model that yeah. you just want to copy, yes. that you can scan it. Yes. And it. Yeah, there are certainly 3D scanners. Well, it's like the guys at, um, the, I'm sure the guy will be there at Ali Pali or 3D scan you and print oh, yeah. you. Yeah. yeah. And you can have you on in. Uh, it's a little bit like a cat scan, isn't it? You yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. Way. It's exactly the same. It just slices through, um, uh, or it does. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, the, a three D scan will do. Obviously, do an exterior scan, but then the print is done by slicing. And the first layer is very slow. It doesn't go at this speed all the time. So you'll see once it's done its first layer, it'll speed up considerably. And my intent is um, to leave this running all evening, um, and we'll see how far we get. Um, but you can see it building up layer by layer. Well, from a practical perspective, if you stick it on, let's say you've got your thing took 22 hours. That yeah. In that 22 hours, yeah. you run out of your reel. Yeah, it'll stop. It'll stop. It, then you just, is, is it then just <coughs> reload? Yeah, you can just reload some more in, it will start again. Yeah, it's got. And do you see the joint? Um, you might do. Um, this has got crash detection on it. If, if it does suffer a crash, and it, I had one the other day, I don't know what caused it. Um, on a fairly small model, it just stops and crash detection, and it will restart itself and, and pick up where it goes. Likewise, um, power cuts, it'll, it'll stop and carry on. When my crash detecting did occur, there was a very slight layer shift. So where it picked up, there was a slight you could, discontinuity. Which way is it actually? Mm. Mm. Uh, it's, basically, the head rises. It's so. Um, yeah, um, was that bit there, you, with the base of it, that first bit, is, is that the end of it? Uh, sorry, I don't... Well, come and have a quick look. Yeah, um, yeah by all means, come over and have a look now, guys. Um, but uh, basically, the head is a certain height above, and it, it'll gradually rise oh, it will, it, up. It, so it'll yeah, go up these these upwards, two, yes. yeah, so we're building, yes. we're building yeah. upwards so that here. Go, that will go, that will raise um, itself up. Proofs are bringing out an extra large version of this next year, which I've already put a deposit on. Um, <laughs> And, and um, that has to print from top, uh, uh, it prints from the bottom up, but the, the bed starts up high and lowers rather, so on this the bed stays still and the head rises. On that the head stays still and the bed lowers. It's, um, it, I think it's a feature, as you get bigger, there's too much lash and play in, in it if you do it any other way. So once you get bigger, you have to do this other I can't remember the name of it, but it's printed in. But it's the same principle. You start at the bottom and print up. But it's going to be about twice the size of this and be able to print bigger stuff. But um, Those thread holders you made, yes. are they made of, out of that filament? Or? Yes, they're made out of, in fact, this, great, this very stuff, the silver yeah. filament, yeah. So we made, I designed and built some thread holders for, for the um, uh, Freemo users. Um, and uh, there's these as well. I'm sure you've seen them lying around. We did these. Bob actually prototyped one in plastic card, didn't you? Yeah. Um, uh, they're just for unhooking um, the Fremo wagons because they've all got. Um, and and we I've done some at different angles. These are both the same, but there's some at 90 degrees, 105, and uh, so I've done them at 15 degree angles. So there's one at uh, 30 degree, one at 15, and one at zero. Um, I'm just trying, other things that you can, this is a 3D print from this very printer. Um, and that was just a file that came with it and it's just a vase essentially, but, um, but it's quite, quite good. Um, uh, yeah, they're probably a bit, yeah, again, they're probably a bit too detailed, but um, uh, I've printed some, um, oh, I was going to show you on here. This is um, a model that I made, I'll bring it round. Um, this is a Joker module for Fremo, and on here, uh, visible, there are actually there are actually four three D printed things on this, uh, but only two of them are visible. What do you think was three D printed? The bridge. Nope. Oh, the people on the bikes. Nope. The yes, the the bridge piers. <laughs> So um, I, um, the bridge is actually a laser cut kit of uh, MDF, 
which I got from Scale Model Scenery, and it's really good because it's got little um, rivet plates and everything, uh, which I sprayed. But then I realized I had nothing to support it, so I actually designed and printed these bridge piers, and they've actually got like little um, lines in to simulate concrete expansion gaps or different, uh, the way those things are. Um, and the other bits you can't see are actually, having done that, I realized I had no way of supporting the track between there and there. So I actually did some A-frames, and so they're hidden under the scenery, but I could print them at exactly the same height as the, the piers I'd already made. And because everything Fremo is very exact where they join. So you've, you've, got, you've got very little tolerance in terms of height. So I just printed some A-frames. And that is the result. And these are, 3D printed in that silver stuff and then they're sprayed, I prime them and then spray them with a concrete paint that I've got, it's got a slight texture to it and then weathered them to, so that's, that's how that all works. So this plastic takes paint all right? Oh yeah, absolutely, yeah, I, I, I always prime it first but yeah, it's fine. Um, Talking about texture, can you actually, is there something in the software you can actually make a textured surface? You, not, well it comes out a bit textured anyway, you can, there is a smoothing function I never tried it because um, uh, I generally quite like the texture it comes out. But as you probably saw from these things, they've got a slight, you can actually see the slight ridges. And they're very difficult to see, but there are, you can see the layers. But, um, you know, they're. Stratification. Stratifications, yes. Well, the red, the, More it's strata. not really touch the sand plastic. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, you, also um, it's got quite a low melting point this, so if you sand it quite vigorously you can actually start melting it. So <laughs> yeah, a gentle sanding it'll take, certainly. Um, but um, no, no, but it's true of a lot of things really when you're sanding. Um, can I just put that, I'll just put that here for a moment and I know you're... That's right. Any other questions? How about clear printing? Sorry? How about clear? Clear. I think you can get clear plastics. You can certainly get translucent ones, I think. Um, I haven't tried it yet. You see, this is still printing the first layer. That's how slow it is. And that first layer is 0.3 of a millimetre thick. So um, what it does with the first layer is, well, it squidges it very slightly. So you'll, you'll get like a li an elephant's foot at the bottom. It's microscopically small, but um, uh, so the... The bottom layer is always very slightly wider than the rest of, but it has to stick to the bed. So the bed is quite, it is at 60 degrees Celsius at the moment. And how, uh, how easy is it to get off the bed? Is it actually stuck solid on it? Uh, yeah, it's stuck pretty well, which is why the, the plate comes off. The early, the, the Mark II version of this didn't have the flexi plate and it was the devil's own job to get the prints off apparently. So they've introduced these flexible plates now, which are held on magnetically. And um, you basically, and also you should really let it cool down. Um, it comes off a lot easier when it's, uh, because the plate is heated in order to um, yeah. help adhesion. So no, no, in fact, it will damage the surface if you do. Um, this particular one, you can refresh it. Uh, like a lot of things, they, they're, they're consumables, these plates. So if you've done a lot of printing, it will, you'll start losing adhesion. This kind you can refresh with a bit of acetone and it, it just gives it a bit more texture. That one, under no circumstances, can use acetone. It will just peel the, um, uh, the surface off. But you'll, um, you'll see once, um, while we're having tea, this will speed up quite dramatically and get a little bit noisier as well, but it'll start um, doing the thing. As I say, the intent is not to finish printing with this tonight. It's just to show you how it all works. So the most difficult bit is this bit? Yeah, yeah, I would say so. Um, that it, it's just getting the it how you want. As I say, this I prototyped it. Realised the buffers were too far apart, and um, also the fact that the overhangs didn't really they worked. They had a little bit of plastic hanging down from them, but they're not terribly. Um, uh, they're not square. They've they've um, not quite worked. So that's why I put those fillets in. And on the final version, it's printed a lot better. Can you use scale? drawings at all and, and load it onto your computer and work from that, do you know? Um, don't know, quite simply. But what you can do is draw something real size. So you can do something, if you want to draw a six foot, um, you can draw it six foot and then scale it in the software. Yeah. So, you know, you can just turn it into HO scale having cadded it at full size. Um, and, uh, and also this has scaling features as well. So you can scale stuff on here as well. 
In fact, that um, dragon, the original, uh, I did that at 120% of the original oh, really? to make a bigger dragon. Um, and I paid a couple of quid for the file to do that, but um, it's great. I like that dragon. Um, and but uh, as I say, you can do all sorts of shapes, and and the the YouTube videos online are, are really quite easy to follow. In fact, I was watching. I just got back from Boston yesterday, and um, I was watching them in Boston to, just to refresh myself for this very event. Um, so. Uh, um, as I say, this uh, I've got this special special mice as well. This this mouse here, um, I'll just um, go back to Fusion. It, it enables you to spin stuff around, and you can tip it and do all sorts of things. You can get slightly disorientated. You can zoom stuff like that and move it away. Um, but it's quite quite clever. And if I go back to our original drawing, I could actually go back and. Uh, so in terms of putting the buffers on, for instance, I can do one. So I'll zoom in um, and we're going to print our, uh, on this surface. So I'm just going to draw a, for some reason, it's, I obviously started this whole thing upside down. Um, so I'm going to um, draw a uh, rectangle and I'm going to start, uh, sorry, a rectangle there, and uh, just basically do a, um, that and I know the sizes of these are 8.6 by 7, so uh, 7 across and 8.6. That's it. And now I'm going to dimension it by, and this is the, the bit I didn't do first time around. So that dimension there is uh, 6.5. There we go. And the dimension. Uh, I haven't written down how far it was from the top, but um, I can't remember. But um, you can do exactly the same there. So I'll, I'll just do a dimension there and we'll call it um, six mil, shall we? Just for the purpose of this. So I've finished that sketch and now I can uh, pull that out by pulling it. You see, you can pull it all the way out there. Mm -hmm. um, but I only wanted three and a half mil, so I just put 3.5 in that dimension. Okay, so now we've drawn that. And now what I'm gonna do on this face here is draw another sketch, um, which is gonna be, oh, let's turn it upside down again. All right. Come here. And we're just get, gonna get a line and start in that corner, go up 45 degrees, and it's doing it at, uh, so it's gonna be 135, isn't it? 135 and bring it down to there. Uh, right, it's probably there, isn't it? And then up to there. That's it. So we've now created our triangle, finish the sketch, and now all we have to do is pull it in this direction. And again, I can select. Instead of doing a distance, I'll just select this face here and there it's pulled it all the way across there. So, okay, and now you can see we've got our 45 degree chamfer. Mm. So it, it's got like, um, um, oh, what's the, the word I'm looking for? It, it snaps to the, it will snap to position. There's lots of little features on here, like the, you, if you want the middle of this particular line, you can, um, if, I, if I say I want to, um, well, in this particular thing here, if I want the center line of this, I'll, I'll say create sketch and you, if you move your uh, mouse around, let's create a line. Can you see there's a wee triangle appeared there? You can, you can only just see it, a blue triangle and that's the center line. So it automatically finds the center line and I can just draw a line up there if I wanted to. And uh, I'll escape that. And you can do what they call a construction line. So that, I'm going to select that line and press X and that line now doesn't appear, and, but you've created a line where you can mirror things from it. So you know whether, so if you wanted to do something exactly two mil from the center line, I could now dimension stuff like we saw before. And there's lots of features like could that. Could you, for instance, having done that buffer like that, yeah. could you copy that and put the second one yes. in without going through all the same process? Yeah, yeah. If, um, you can do mirroring and mirror features and also symmetry as well. 
Yeah, so um, if you wanted to do a complicated girder bridge, you yeah. could do sort of one panel of it. Yes. And then add the second panel. Yeah, there's also things called patterning as well. It's getting quite complex and it's a bit beyond my skill level at the moment. But um, you can pattern stuff so you can create a single pattern and then multiply it yeah. many, many times down a particular... Um, uh, right, we've... Looks like we've finished the first layer and, and you see it's going a lot faster now. Um, it, now, this is what happened. This, the part of the um, brim has um, come unstuck, but that's, that's all right. That's part of the purpose of the brim, so we should be all right. But you can see it's now going a lot faster. To a curve. Yeah. You can also a curve, and maybe an oval buffer, buffer stop or something. Yeah. How easy is it to do like an oval shape? Um, yeah, you can do all sorts of... Um, so let's go to our... This is our little box that we were drawing earlier. Um, let's do a um, do another sketch. So let's go s uh, sketch on this on this plane. So um, there is create an uh, you can do an arc. So there's different kinds of arcs as well. So you can do a three point arc. So you can uh, so I'll start uh, go there and then you can there we go. Look, you can do all sorts of things like that. There we go, and there's an arc drawn. Um, and you can do, if you want to do a semicircle, you can just do a whole, a, a whole circle and just cut half of it away, like I showed you earlier. But um, it's so quite you take a... commissions, Dave. I need a fourth bridge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is go past the third bridge, is it? Yeah. Oh, damn. Yeah. Um, sorry. Did you do a free text line? The things I think of that, I mean, for example, let's say you wanted to do a, a station name board. That's yeah. Right. So you want to. Uh, this has got Neuhausen in best. It, in, yeah, you can do text as well. You can actually pull text out or sync. This is um, recessed. Um, but I've done a uh, name plate for my um, granddaughter's bedroom. And on, on the slicer software, if I go back to the slicer software, um, there we go. Three when he started, he's now yeah. 12. Um, but I, you, can, you can actually, so let's say I wanted to do, go all the way up there, but I wanted the ramp, the, the very top face, to be a different colour. So I can actually insert a pause there, a colour change in there, and the whole thing will pause, and you can quickly change the printer reel for a different colour. I mean, they come in all sorts of shapes and sizes, these. I've got some more in here, but um, uh, to show Bob, I actually bought some... Uh, What's that one? This is PETG, which is black, but it looks just the same as it's shiny. I've got, I keep them in vacuum bags because they're slightly hydroscopic, the plastic, they'll gradually get water in them and it'll uh, stop the print, so I keep them in these. But that's what PETG is, and it's, it looks exactly the same, um, but it's different kind of plastic completely. Um, and that's the better one, isn't it? I wouldn't say better. It depends what for you're trying to do. For certain, yeah, for, for outdoor and uh, heat applications. Yeah. And um, as you see, the, these are both 3D printed, different colours, plastic. Um, on there is a modification for this. We can uh, you can fit up to six different colours. It, it'll have heads for six different. So you can automatically change the colours. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, but they, yeah, they. Um, the, the new one I'm getting will have automatic tool changing as well, so you can change from a thicker nozzle to a thinner nozzle and stuff like that. Yeah, this is all going all right. I'm just, uh, okay, you have to keep an eye on it sometimes, but it seems to be going all right. And um, yeah, so it's just printing. So what we'll do, we'll print the bottom layer of a certain thickness and then it will start doing the infill and you'll just get this um, wavy line. But we'll leave it going for as I say, this is a bit of uh, the end of a reel. I've hardly got any plastic left on here, so um, I've not got anything to use it for. It seems to change the angle of the... The angle of a dangle, yes. Um, it does, yeah, so it changes... Yeah, so it's a bit like brickwork. Yeah, yeah, it's a bit like brickwork. It changes the end. So it'll do a diagonal, uh, a left to right, and then a right to left um, diagonal on each layer. Flemish or English? Sorry? Flemish or English? Bond. Bond, all right, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, anything else? When you get these 3D printers from, you get them 
online? Yeah, I, I, I ordered this all online from this company, Prusa. In fact, um, a, a feature of the Prusa is that all the orange parts are 3D printed using these printers. They have a, what they call a print farm of thousands of these with orange. You can get them in different colours, but Prusa is the, this is called Prusa Orange. Um, and it's, these are all in PETG. Um, so you can actually 3D print. What a lot of people do <coughs> is 3D print their own spare parts. Um, so they've got a stock of spare parts in case a bit of it breaks. <coughs> Where did you buy your spools from? Those uh, also from Prusa, yeah. I, I've, um, I've stuck with their products. So it costs a bit. I, I generally buy about six reels at a time. I've got a, a mate who's also got one of these, uh, and we tend to share the postage costs. It's about 15, 10, 15 quid to get them over from. Uh, so we'll buy maybe 150 quid's worth of plastic yeah. um, and sip it over. But um, Very yeah, but I've done things like um, my my son. I fitted um, a uh, we fitted a stair gate. He's got a one year old um, who loves climbing stairs. So we fitted a pair of stair gates, and they're these tensor barrier type things with a uh, so they they spring back out of the way, um, but. Up on the uh, upstairs, he had a, a quite. He's got quite a thick skirting board, and to fit the the bottom bracket and the top bracket, there was a 15 mil difference between the verticals, and you could order you can order a spacer kit online for about 15 quid. I said, I'll oh, just give me the bracket, and I made a spacer, um, it, and it's the exact profile of the. So I just copied the profile. Um, and it's quite easy to do. Um, and printed a 15 mil spacer in, in black PETG and you can't even tell it's got a spacer on it. So you can see it's finished a layer now and it now does a perimeter. So it, it'll do the perimeter first and then start doing diagonals again. Um, and uh, they're quite fascinating to watch actually. So I'll, I'll get out of the way in a minute. All it's now doing, oh, that's interesting, it's now doing a, a zigzag pattern. Yeah, so it's now doing the infill, it started doing the infill. So the layout building will get a lot quicker now. So I'll get out of the way and you can come over and have a look. 